You've got questions, we've got answers. Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, answering the questions that new leaders ask us. Actually, it's our goal to help all leaders be more successful, productive, and confident. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. Today, I'm answering the question, how do I make feedback more effective? Are you ready? Let's get started. It's a really good question. As a leader, we want to be effective coaches, give effective feedback. So the question of how do I make feedback more effective is a really good one. I'm glad you asked. So before we can answer the question, we must go to the beginning and think about the goal of feedback. So what is the goal of feedback? Well, we give feedback so people will apply the feedback, right? So the goal of feedback is for people to apply the feedback. We give it hoping that they will take action on it. All right, that makes sense. So in order for people to apply it though, some other stuff must happen. First, feedback must be accepted. If I haven't accepted it as valid and useful, I'm not going to apply it. But before I can accept it, feedback must be understood. If I don't understand what the other person is telling me, it's very hard for me to accept it and apply it. But before I can understand it, feedback must be heard. I must paying attention to you if you're giving me the feedback. So let me flip that all around and start from the beginning. Feedback must be heard before it can be understood, before it can be accepted, before it can be applied. And so effective feedback must be applied. So what are some key things we can do in a very quick and simple way that we can make sure the feedback that we're sharing is heard, understood, accepted, and applied? Here it is. Number one, have a clear message. Make sure you're crystal clear on what it is that you want them to know. What's happening with their behavior? What's happening with their results? What's going on? What is it that needs to be changed or corrected or even something that you want them to continue to do? It applies to positive as well as negative feedback. Make sure you have a clear message in your head, probably written down. Then you must communicate it clearly. It's not enough to know what you want to say, but you need to say it in a way that it can be heard and understood without people getting defensive about it so that the message can actually get through. Number three, make it a conversation. One of the mistakes that leaders make in giving feedback is they say, well, I'm going to unload all this feedback on you rather than having a conversation, starting with, so what do you think? How do you think it's going? Finding out from them. You see, if they say the same thing you were thinking, you can jump all the way down to accepted because they've already gotten that far themselves. Next, translate it to the future. Too often feedback is about things that have already happened. It's a message about the past. But until we can translate that, because that's what happened, here's what needs to be done next time. Until we can translate it to the future, the chances of acceptance and application go way down. People don't know what to apply if all you've done is given them a history lesson. And lastly, focus on acceptance. Don't focus on saying exactly the right words, though that's important. Focus on getting to the point where people say, I get it. I understand it. I'm ready to apply it. Focus on getting them to accept. So, if you want to make feedback more effective, first of all, remember the steps that must take place. It must be heard, understood, and accepted before it can be applied. Let me close with today's tweet. The goal of feedback is for people to apply that feedback. But before that can happen, people must hear, understand, and accept that feedback. I hope you found this useful. If you have a question you'd like me to answer on a future episode, well, send us an email to info at kevineikenberry.com or leave your question in the comments if you don't mind about doing that. And know that there are plenty of other resources, lots of these videos, lots of other resources for free for your to be available to you on kevineikenberry.com, whether it's on our blog or other places. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, make sure you give us a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe so that you don't miss any in the future. And lastly, if you like the tenor of what I have to say, if you like the approach that I take, then I hope that you would join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for our newsletter called Your Remarkable Day. It's free. It's for you. I hope you'll join us there. And I hope you'll see me back here in a couple weeks with another chance for me to answer the questions that you're asking about leadership.